Now, if you're a parent, you'll recognise the problem. The teenagers with anxieties about an important exam or maybe pressure to find the right group of friends. Well, now there may be an answer and it doesn't involve popping any pills. Many schools are trying to bring a sense of calm into the classroom by a new brain training technique. It's called mindfulness. The method has developed from its roots in Eastern philosophy and the recent surge in popularity is now being backed by the scientific community. The BBC's Luke Walton has been to a school here in the UK to find out how it all works. Just place your attention in your hands. These pupils are practising a 7-11. Breathing in for a count of seven, out for 11. It's all part of mindfulness, a technique which aims to reduce anxiety about the past or the future and instead heighten awareness of the present. So does it work? I think it's been really useful, like when you're stressed, it just really helps you focus on what you've got to do. I didn't find it entirely useful, but because um, I don't have a very big attention span. Research published today examined how hundreds of teenagers coped with the exam season after being on a mindfulness course. It found their confidence was higher than other children, their rates of stress and depression lower. I think the reason why mindfulness is so important is because it's a training in attention and the attention of teenagers now is pulled in so many directions simultaneously by their phones, by Twitter, by Facebook, by computers, by TV, by YouTube. Currently only a few dozen schools in the UK practice mindfulness, but the number is increasing. Luke Walton, BBC News. Interesting. Well, with me via webcam is uh, Kevin Hawkins who uses mindfulness techniques in the classroom at the International School in Prague. And here in the studio is Gen Kelsang Sangye from the London's Dorjang Buddhist Centre. I hope I've got that uh, pronunciation right. And of, of course, Professor Catherine Weir from Exeter University, who carried out the study into mindfulness in schools. Well, thank you all for being with me. Let's, can I start with you, Catherine? And we saw those pictures, the children lying down, it's sort of like meditation and so on. In a way, quite a familiar sight. In scientific terms, what's actually going on in these kids' minds? Well, what's happening in these kids' minds is that their brains are being reshaped by the little practices that they're doing. The parts of the brain that are, respond to anxiety and stress are getting smaller, and the parts of the brain that lead you to feel calmer, to manage your impulses, to feel kinder towards yourself and to other people are actually growing and reshaping. And was I right and fair to say at the beginning, I don't know if you heard me, that, that what's going on is something that might otherwise be dealt with by popping a pill? Absolutely, yes. But is, it is as stark as that? It can be, yes. Um, certainly things like soothing yourself, feeling better about stress and so on, are things that most of us try to cope with in ways that feel good at the time but are actually in the long run self-destructive and teenagers are very prone to doing that. I'm going to come to you in a second, but let's, uh, let's go over to Prague now and, and uh, Kevin Hawkins. Uh, just, just tell me, in your experience, we heard you, you carry this out in your school, you get encourage the, the teenager to do it. Does it work? I mean, we saw one example here in the UK. Does it work for you? Well, it works for me personally, yeah. That's kind of why I got interested. But for teenagers, yeah, we've been teaching it here for three years, the children in Prague. And uh, I'm teaching especially 11 to 14-year-olds. We also teach it in, to our 15 and 17-year-olds in the high school. And yeah, I would say for a majority of children, they get something from it. It can be varies according to the individual. Some people use it very much for controlling stress or for focus. Other people might apply it in sports or, or for performance anxiety. Um, I, I don't know, obviously, wh who your students are and what they're like, but my guess is they're not the kind of uh, uh, teenagers we'd find, say, in, in a inner city school here in London, where there is plenty of stress, plenty of anxiety, you know, from difficult homes. I mean, would it work in those kind of conditions or just with the sort of privileged kids you're dealing with? Yeah, I think that's true. We have a different environment to the one you're talking about there. But on the other hand, teenagers are teenagers and, and those, uh, those crucial years bring with them a certain amount of stress, whatever your environment. So I think the kind of skills that we're, we're giving kids here gives them a kind of toolbox, you know, toolkit that they can pull on. And I would think, yes, very much so children in any area would benefit from this kind of training. The, the ability to anchor yourself, to calm yourself, to, lo to know a little bit more about how your mind works so that when problems do arise, you get a chance to, to really draw from that toolkit and apply the, the things that you've learned. OK, uh, just don't go away. Again, Kelsang Sangye, 
It, it occurs to me that all this, and you know, we've even got a scientist talking about it, but isn't this something rather kind of old and ancient that's been going on, being tried in the East, and all these people come along and, and give it a kind of new tag on it and call it mindfulness as if they've reinvented the wheel? Is it something like that? I think it's very much like that. Um, yes, because Buddha taught about controlling the mind two and a half thousand years ago, and it's through meditation practices that we can actually control our mind. You know, the reason for so many of the problems in our world is that basically people's minds are out of control, that they develop delusions such as anger or attachment, ignorance, jealousy. And so when their minds are uncontrolled, they, they can't control what they say, what they do. And so that leads to lots of problems. Also, today's modern world is very complicated. Many, many things that people have to attend to. So we need a method of meditation to, to practice being peaceful and also to generate a positive intention. Everything that we do relates to our intention. So we can be mindful, but we need to be mindful of the correct things. If we're mindful of remembering a grudge against somebody, that's no, no benefit. Now, for you, it's very much a, a part of your religion. You're, mm -hmm. you're Buddhist. Um, has it ever occurred to you in the past that, that, that what you do as part of your religion is something that could help a wider population? I think uh, basically every, everyone needs to meditate because we all need need the opportunity to, to develop clarity and peace within our mind. We'll actually only really generate happiness in our mind if our mind is peaceful. So, so many conditions today are producing unpeaceful states of mind. So when I think about, for example, my teacher Geshe Kelsang, he's written a book called uh, The Story of Angulimala. And right. this, this book shows how you can actually overcome anger completely. OK, so, we probably haven't got time to, to go into that. Catherine Weir. You've done the study, and you can say, can you categorically, you're a scientist, you know, you, you, put, you put facts there, you put figures there, you can say that this thing is works and you think it's worth pursuing in classrooms. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. The evidence is very clear. There's very strong evidence, too, from mindfulness in adults. And we're discovering that, unsurprisingly, children's minds work in much the same ways, and they achieve much the same benefits from the same kind of practices. But how, how do you know? Because you, you don't know what the kids would have been like without this. Well, we have controls. Okay. The study we've just done at Exeter had controls of uh, the same number. 260 children did the dot B, 260 didn't. And we tested them before and after, and the controls didn't show the same impacts in what they were doing. They were doing lessons as usual. OK. Very, very quickly to Kevin Hawkins. I mean, in, in 10 seconds, I mean, so this is an ancient art that you've just given a new label to and, you, and you're bringing it into the classroom. Absolutely, yeah. And, it's, and we're using it as an attention training, as a way of building self-awareness. And for teenagers especially, just that chance to, to understand a little bit about how the mind works, that the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and about other people aren't necessarily true, so that we can inquire into that. And just, you know, just, it's just a healthy scepticism about our thought processes that can actually, as you're growing through the teenage years, can be very valuable in the way that you view the world, view yourself. And, and just as a matter of interest, have, have the parents bought into it, or some of them think, oh, you're bringing in sort of hippie stuff into the classroom? <laughs> well, I think some of them might have thought that, but interestingly, just a few weeks ago, I offered a workshop for parents early in the morning, and 60 people turned up. We're only a small school, 800 kids. Of those 60, 45 of the parents signed up for a, an eight-week course themselves. OK, Kevin Hawkins, I think we're going to leave you there, but thank you very much for being uh, part of the discussion on, on, on GMT. <laughs> Very quickly, it must bring you some satisfaction to see young, young people trying out this technique. I think it's wonderful because the, the potential young people, I was in a primary school, um, Kidbrook Park Primary School last week, and being with the eight, nine-year-olds, nine, ten-year-olds, it was a complete joy. They got such, such a lot of potential in their minds, and it's beautiful to see what they do know about, for example, love and compassion and patience. It's beautiful, so that I think this, okay. this will really help them.